Hello everyone, my name is Asha Shell Charles from the Irvington Public Library. Today I'll be reading Una by Kelly DiPuccio and Raisa Figura. Una was sweet and a little bit salty, like the ocean where she lived. She was also brave and curious, like most treasure hunters. When Una was just a baby, no bigger than a scallop, she chased a pearl into the mouth of a whale. Lucky for her, she popped right back out. As the years passed, Una found bigger treasure and even bigger trouble. It's a good thing she has Otto. Una rescued Odo from an oyster net when he was just a pup. She taught him tricks like sit, roll over, walrus, and her favorite, pupperfish. Una and Odo searched for treasure nearly every day. They uncovered keys and coins and buttons and bottles. Sometimes they even found lost gold and sometimes lost glasses. But there was one special treasure Una can never quite reach, the crown. It was extra sparkly in a way that made Ona's heart thump. But the crown was stuck deep in the rift and not a pole or a pail or the sticky stick of a snail could get it unstuck. Still, Una was determined. Her next plan was a good one. She knocked the crown loose. Unfortunately, the current shifted. The lobster crate and rock drifted, and the squirrel, well, see for yourself. It released the black ink. It's hard to say who was more surprised when the water cleared, Una or the shark. Her third plan most definitely would have worked if the crabs hadn't been so crabby and the waves hadn't been so wavy. And if that long ship plank hadn't bumped her head hard before the greedy, greedy rift gobbled it up too. While the crabs tried, Poor Una, this was getting personal. She shouted into the pit, you can keep your dumb crown, I quit. Generally speaking, mermaids are not quitters, but at this point, one could hardly blame her. Instead of looking for treasure with Odo, Una snapped on the rocks with the sea lions. She drew pictures in the sand with the starfish, and she read from her favorite glass bottles with her land friends. All of this would have been perfectly fine, except Una wasn't perfectly fine. Clearly, she was missing her spark, and a mermaid without her spark is like a seagull without an appetite. Unnatural. A seashell washed ashore, Una studied it thoughtfully. It gave her an idea. She got right to work. The next day, Una peered nervously into the rift. Why did it look so much deeper and scarier than she remembered? Otto pretended to be a narwhal, making Una laugh. 
Admittedly, the new treasure hunting goggles she'd invented were funny looking, but she, but they were also her best shot at reaching the crown. She used the bottle scent goggles. She dove to the bottom of the murky rift. That's when Una noticed something she couldn't see from above, a bridge. A bridge made from a crate, a rock, and the very same plank that had plunked her on the head, and it lay straight to the crown. But that, what was that rumbling sound? It grew louder and louder. The ocean floor shook and the water around Una turned into a thick stew of swirling sand and sea creatures. She couldn't see. She felt trapped. Would the hungry rift gobble her up too? Through the commotion, Una could hear something else in the distance. It was faint, but comforting and familiar. The whales. Una sang along until the rumbling stopped and the water cleared. Finally, this was her chance. Una held her breath. Ready, steady, aim. Clink. Hooray! She got the crown. We did it, Una cheered, placing the crown on her best friend. It really is beautiful, she gushed. But these, Una said excitedly, holding up her new goggles. These are spectacular. Otto agreed, because sometimes the best treasure in the world isn't found. It's made. The end. Thank you everyone for joining me today and I will see you next time. Bye.